So you talked about the shame piece of it. When, it is, when is it something that's like really awesome? Like when in your life is it awesome? The way we talk about it, it's always a, a connected with the negative. You, you use the word oppression. I don't wanna, I don't wanna step on, I don't wanna, you know, I don't wanna use minority for me because there are people who are really, who experience oppression as a minority, right? And so people here in the US, especially in the left, you know, especially in the woke left, like that's the thing that we take a step into. Like it's seen in that way. But when is it actually not that at all? It's like, hey, this is cool. I think part of growing up in an area where not everyone is like you, you naturally cling to people who are like part of the same minority <laughs> that you're a part of. Um, and I think it, it builds a sense of pride in who you are and it's something you carry with you wherever you go. Um, it's like kind of similar to when like last, one of the, I think two classes ago when we talked about like how important it is for like us as Arabs to carry like our morals and, mm -hmm. and respect and all of these things around with us. It's the same thing. It's like your identity and it's, it what's, it's what makes you proud to be who you are. Um, like the first thing I say when I'm like talking about who I am well, not the first thing, but like I'm, I'm an Arab Christian because that's like to me, that's who I am. I'm not just an Arab. I'm not just a Christian. I'm both because like, I don't know. It just makes me proud to be who I am. So can, can, can somebody else, can someone say more about that? Because cause that, this is something that minorities, right, are often criticized about. Why are you always talking about your minoritized status? Why are you always talking about it? Why are you always talking about it? So can someone... I think it's like from being a minority, like you find um, within your communities too, like just the uplifting sense. I would say like, like I said, from Long Island is not, it's like majority white. And so I, I always kind of saw like the negative effects, I guess, like of being a minority and like racism and like, I'm obviously racism and negative, but like being a minority and then coming to Penn State, even though like the black students, there are not a lot of black students at Penn State, like the black community at Penn State is like popping. Like the black community at Penn State is coming together, like supporting each other, always like showing out for each other. And I think that that really like showed me and allowed me to embrace my black side and like see how beautiful like being black is and like just uplift the community and just other black people that you see because like you kind of like have an understanding that other people don't have. My family is Muslim. Um, and I don't consider myself like a very super religious person or definitely not as religious as my parents and the rest of my family is. But, you know, like your question makes me think of Eid and how beautiful like it is to see like the entire Muslim community in Philadelphia really like coming together. Mm -hmm. Even like during COVID, like they would do all the prayers and things like that virtually and they would still make sure to come through like every single time. Um, just, you know, getting together and celebrating with, like, so much food and, like, mm -hmm. dressing up and stuff like that. It's, it's definitely a beautiful celebration. Mm -hmm. It's not that being a minority is something to, to, to be ashamed of, but being a minority is something that people, people who are minorities somehow feel bad about or feel like they're always, like, fighting against or always, like, you know what I mean? Like, like the, what you said what, what the two of you just said is there's nothing negative about it at all. It's like it's quite uplifting, right? But when we're talking about it, we're always talking about inequality and justice and, you know, segregation and so on and so forth, right? We're never talking about the positive stuff. So I think I just want to continue to explore the, what are, what are some other pieces of the positive stuff, positive pieces of uh, I think that being a minority just comes with like different cultures that people in the majority or just like not a part of that specific minority group uh -huh. won't exactly like understand or don't get to partake in. Um, like I think like being black is beautiful. Like there's so much culture that we have created in America. Um, and it's not something that really can be denied because you see it everywhere. Uh -huh. um, and the same really goes for like any minority culture. There's just like so much that goes in that that you can't really completely celebrate or appreciate if you don't come from that or you're not like a part of it yourself. Okay, so let me ask Courtney, let me ask you, what part of your culture are you really prideful about that you feel really good about? 
I think for me, um, just growing up the way that I have and um, like maybe not having as much as the people I'm surrounded with um, has caused me to be very grateful for what I have. And also I've met like a lot of very kind people that have helped me and my family along uh -huh. the way. Um, and I think those are things that have shaped sort of my values and beliefs that I would, um, that I'm grateful that I have experienced. Uh -huh. um, I think it's definitely a different experience than um, like the rest of yes. what you're talking about. Okay, so here. Listen, the, so white people often feel, um, like if I, ask, if I ask someone who's white about, give me something about their background, they'll often say, and then Aish, we're gonna come to you. They'll often say like, hey, I'm just white, right? So you, what are the pieces of your, what are the pieces of your culture? Like who you are, right? You're white, so you can't like really be, well, I'm proud of being white, because Seth said, um, well, there's like, you can't really, do, there's the, the black and beauty and black is beautiful. Well, you can't say um, white is beautiful, right? Like white, well, you could, there's nothing wrong with it, but you, but you can't. I mean, you could say like whatever ethnicity. No, go ahead. Yeah. What your ethnicity, right? Like you said being Greek is awesome, right? Do you know what your ethnicity is? Um, I know that one side of my family um, came from Ireland, but there's a mixture, and like the other side of my family came from like Czechoslovakia, okay. like the Czech Republic now. Um, but we don't really hold on to many of those. You don't hold on to that, so right. you can't. So you, so so many people. This is the thing. Like so many, you come here to the U.S. and in a place like the U.S., sometimes people really hold on to their culture, right, and it becomes something really important. Other times, people just give it away. Like the number of people in this room who have, who are from, especially if you're from white and you're from Pennsylvania, who have Germanic roots. But how many people, how many people with German roots actually celebrate your German culture? Anybody? Is there even a single person, one person? But if you, how many of you have Irish roots and you celebrate your Irish culture because you get drunk on St. Patty's Day? Like we have a whole holiday here at Penn State for Irish students, you know what I mean? Everybody goes out and gets drunk on State Patty's Day. But we don't have that if you don't have it. So it's like one of these things. It's like, what are you gonna be, what are you gonna be proud of, right? It's like it, it kind of gets washed away in some way. Aish, how about you? Like, what about, how is it in, in Dubai? Like in terms of like, how are Indians in Dubai? Like how do they celebrate their like uniqueness and their uplift and the awesomeness of being Indian? I think like Indians in Dubai, so I feel like the fact that we are like minorities you know, um, in a Muslim country forces us to embrace and like love our culture even more um, because we tend to like celebrate like Indian festivals and you know, like eat Indian food or like speak uh -huh, like uh -huh. the Indian language, our language. Um, so I think like um, it kind of like forces us to like like I feel like if like if I was in India, it would be like the same thing, you know. It wouldn't like feel because everyone is Indian and everyone just celebrating yeah. like Indian. So I feel like in Dubai, celebrating like Indian festivals or like just like celebrating Indian culture is like a big thing for us. Uh huh. Um, and it's actually like very like accepted and like also celebrated by like Emiratis and stuff like that. I feel like people who live in Dubai would know like Burj Khalifa is like lit up for like Indian festivals like Diwali and stuff. So I feel like even they in a way like celebrate Indian culture. Okay, and, yeah. all right, so let me ask you this then. Do either of the two of you, have you had the experience in, in two different Khaliji or GCC countries, right? Do you have the experience of people there saying like, hey, why don't you just be more um, Kuwaiti, or why, did you, why can't you just be more Emirati? Like, why, don't, why do you have to separate yourselves? Like, why do you do that? Why don't you just like be like the rest of us? Do you, do, is that a conversation that people have over there? No, not at all. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd say there's, see it's, there's still a very big dividing factor that puts me as someone who's very different from someone who is like 
born yeah. like born Kuwaiti and raised yeah. Kuwaiti um, or Khaliji in general mainly just because like there are differences in like values obviously because there mm -hmm. are differences mm -hmm. in like culture and tradition um, I if I were to speak Khaliji Arabic mm -hmm. with someone who is Kuwaiti they wouldn't look at me really weird because most kids who do grow up in Kuwait end yeah. up picking up the language and yeah. and it's what we speak when we're around there because it's what most people understand. Like I can say stuff in Lebanese sometimes and, and they'll look at me and be like, what are you saying? Yeah. Um, so well, let me ask you this, right? Yep, that, that's a good point. Do you, what do the two of you make of the fact that here, so if, if we think about Sev and, and we think of, we think about Marika, Marika, the two of them, if, they, if, people, if they're seen as separating themselves somehow, there'll be a lot of people who will say, why do you have to separate yourself? We're all Americans. Just like, why do you keep doing that? Why do you keep holding up your group? Or why do you keep, like black students in Penn State, why do you all have to like, just like go do your own thing? We're all Penn Staters here. Like, come on, man, why is it like, why is, why, 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 why do you, you all separate yourselves, right? Like, what's the problem? Like, stop doing that. We'll stop talking about race and we'll all just be here and we'll get over this stuff, right? So what do you make of that here in the United States? Because that's a very common way of seeing the issue of being a minority in the U.S. I think... The reason why it's such a prominent conversation here is because the, like the, the U.S. is built on the fact that it, like it's built upon immigration. Everyone has immigrated here at some point <laughs> in history if they say they're American. Um, unless, unless you're, in, in some way you have, unless you're yeah. indigenous American. And exactly. even then you came onto the, con somebody came here. But, and uh -huh. the reason why that's prominent here is because you just have so many different groups of people. Like, uh -huh. you don't, you, you obviously have a diverse group of, like a diverse population no matter where you are in the world. But in the US, if I, would, if I were American, let's say I was born here. Uh -huh. I have some cousins who were born here, but they were raised in, in Lebanon. They can't come and say that I'm just, they're just as American as everyone else here is. Because mm -hmm. those experiences are different. The way they grew up are di is different. The food they ate is different. Mm -hmm. uh, the way they speak is different. Yeah.